Is it the weather that drives away the crowds, or is it the unpredictability of life? One thing is certain, that in this fleeting moment, both the flea market and the occupants of the car share the same fate. To be lost in time, like tears in the rain. Hello and welcome back to the workshop. We've had quite a few new subscribers over the last week or so, so I thought I'd better introduce myself uh, to uh, people who might not know me. My name is Mark. I'm a general dealer in antiques and vintage. My family have been buying and selling as far back as the middle of the 19th century. They were tatters, general dealers themselves, and also owned a repository in Stourbridge where the people that, of that particular area could deposit their furniture and whatever items that they wanted to store for a while until they needed them back again. So I've got a long history, family history of uh, dealing, buying, selling. And I think it's something that once it's in your blood, you can't really get rid of it. So there you go. Um, any questions about that, leave them in the comments below. I've got a really interesting little haul for you today and it's uh, this will surprise you there's actually a couple of pieces of ceramics because one of the things I've learned by setting up my Antique Central website which you'll see the uh, link below there so please go and visit it have a little look round uh, browse the store but also check out the knowledge bank which uh, will give you lots of uh, invaluable information about all aspects of antiques and vintage and uh, there's also uh, a blog page with some interesting written blog posts. Right, so we'll start. I'll go as quick as I can and I'll try and keep it to the 20 minutes as promised uh, on the community post. So first up, I'll show you, if you watched my previous film, it was about the quick restoration of an item I acquired from a flea market actually from one of our subscribers so if he's watching leave me a comment below Richie and uh, let me know what you think hopefully you'll uh, you'll approve of what I did I will cut in a photograph of the item before I restored it so you can compare it to what we have now and it is a piece of Welsh mining memorabilia featuring a coal miner a coal truck and a pit head and originally the base was uh, it is a hardwood it is solid wood um, but it was very scratched up scuffed and I thought that I would uh, basically restore it and ebonize it in uh, with a sympathetic view to the uh, the coal and the industry so I thought ebonizing it would look nice so here's the final Oh, and also I put a green felt base onto the bottom. So if you do have it uh, on display on a, a, a desk, uh, it's not going to scratch up the uh, the desk. So hopefully you'll uh, you'll like what I did. <laughs> you can't please all the people all the time. That's one thing I've learned in this business. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. But uh, I'm pleased with it. It's on the website now. It's available on the website, and I think I've got it up for... Uh, 65 pounds I think uh, so let me know what you think of it next up I'll show you I'll mix it up a bit so it's not all metal to begin with here's a fun little item picked up from a an antique fair well it was actually a toy and uh, um, military affair but uh, there was one stall there that sold general antiques and vintage so, and I picked up this little articulated dog. So as you can see, his little legs move. <laughs> I really like him actually. He's, uh, he's uh, an attractive uh, little animal and it looked lovely as a decorative ornament. I don't think there's any huge age to it at all. I think, uh, you know, you don't get that kind of, uh, that patina through use on a genuine antique. So I think this has been made to look old. It could well be um, sort of late 20th century, that kind of period. 
But uh, having said that, it's a lovely item and I still rate it highly, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. And uh, I think it's on the uh, it's on the website for about thirty thirty five pounds, I think, uh, including shipping. All my prices on the website include shipping. So uh, I tell you what, uh, here's a little question for you. Let's give him a name. If you come up with a name, leave it in the comments below, and uh, we'll uh, I might even add it to the website listing the name. So there you go, nice little articulated. Wooden dog. Next up, we have a, this is nice. I don't think I've shown you this before. This is a Sri Lankan brass pressed platter or charger. Now, I know it's Sri Lankan because I've got a feeling I did show it you before in one of the other haul videos, but I didn't realize there was a, a maker's mark on it. So if I grab my loop, a loop, by the way, is the jeweler's magnifying glass. Like that there, I'll show you on the close-up. Mine has a light. And right down the bottom, down there, I'll show you on the close-up camera, there's a maker's mark. And I uh, believe from memory it's K-A-A. So if I can find it again, pretty sure it's down there somewhere. Uh, yeah, KAA, which is an organization in Sri Lanka that promotes uh, craftsmen, artisans, and gives them an outlet to sell their products. So you'll find different products with the mark KAA, and it's, a, it's basically a, a trade group if you want to put it in those terms. But it's a lovely piece of work and features a peacock design with piercings around the rim. Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I can't remember if I've listed this on the website because I've been listing like mad recently. Uh, I think it is on the... Uh, I think it is on the web, the Antique Central website. And I think I've got it up for around the £60, but don't hold me to that. But a uh, very nice decorative item. Right, a ceramic now, shock you all. Having said I never sell ceramics, again, I've learnt on the website, you've got to. So we have a bit of work in stock, to be quite honest. It's a Schurich West German planter. And the, uh, the model number is 88717. And as I've mentioned before, the 17 should represent the height of it. The 887 is the design, and the 17 should represent the height. But in this in this case, it doesn't. It's it's not quite. It's, I think it's 14 and a half centimeters, as opposed to 17, which is a bit unusual. But the reason I picked it up, and you can pick these up at flea markets and car boots for around several pounds, five pounds, six, seven. But they do sell for in the region of 25 to 30. So if you see them, it's always worth picking them up, and. The other good thing about this is the colour. I tend to avoid the brown or tan coloured ones. Now, having said that, that is brown on it, but there's the red flash here, basically, of the floral, the enamel paint uh, glaze design. So that is quite a striking red, and that will help sell it at the higher end, which will be around, including shipping, around the sort of £30 mark, roughly. If I'm very lucky, I might get 35 but it's in quite good condition. There's one blemish to the glaze. Um, it's not damaged. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I think you can on the close-up. There it is, look. There's a, a slight blemish to the glaze, but that was part of the manufacturing process. And the way they knocked these out in West Germany back in the day, in the 1960s, you get a lot of that kind of, um, those sort of um, glazing flaws. So it's nothing to worry about, really. There's no cracks, no chips. It's not damaged as such. And as I say, I'm hoping to get around £30 for that. Right. Next up, we have another decorative item. And this was picked up from the same toy and military affair uh, from uh, a fellow dealer who I know very well. And it's a, uh, well, it's a horse, isn't it? <laughs> I 
no prizes for guessing that. So artisan made again. It's quite naive, rustic. Um, strangely, his legs move like that. <laughs> um, can't quite figure that out myself. Uh, but uh, they do. Anyway, there you go. It's just part of it, uh, how it was made, I suppose. But it's clearly from the eyes. You can see the, the way the eyes have been painted. It's definitely Indo-Persian, that Indo-Persian uh, region. It's vintage. It's got a nice patina to the, the what would have been a, a varnish. I rate this quite highly. There's no um, felt or bays on the bottom at all um i think it's just an attractive decorative item horses are always popular if you see them pick them up um they sell well and i think i've got this listed on the uh website the antique central website for around 45 pounds and we'll see how we get on beauty of my website compared to other well-known auction sites is once they're listed that's it they can sit there till they sell i'm not charged a monthly listing fee and I can build up as many listings as I want on my website and I can edit them and um, modify them, you know, as I go along. Uh, there's, it's slightly distressed. There is a little bit of paint loss, but you would expect that from a vintage decorative item like this. So it's no problem. And it actually adds to the charm in a lot of people's opinion. So uh, again, I could say we could another little challenge for you. Let's come up with a name for the horse as well. So um yeah, if you can come up with a name, again, I may well add it to the website just as a bit of fun for the listing. So, yeah, lovely little um, vintage Indo-Persian region decorative horse. Right, next up we have something completely different. And this was the last of the three items I bought from the antique, uh, sorry, the, bin, the toy and uh, uh, the toy fair. Uh, it's a model. It is a vintage, probably around mid-century. I don't know. Difficult to tell sometimes. I was going to say mid-century, but it could really be as late as the sort of the 70s, 80s, to be quite honest with you. Um, it could, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult to... Um, to, to pin an age on this. But what I do know about it, and the reason it looks so old, is it's actually made from the component parts of milling equipment from, um, I believe, like cotton mills up north in England. And when you look at it, you can actually see these come off, like things like cotton bobbins and things like that. So the actual wood it's made of is quite possibly antique or certainly early 20th century, but the item itself may have been made in the late 20th century. So there's the dilemma, and that's why sometimes it is difficult to age these items. It's a good example, that is, actually. But I think it's uh, it's extremely decorative. Wheels spin round. Uh, it's just a self-contained little unit. There's no hooks on the back. It doesn't appear to be missing anything. And uh, I've got it on the website for around, I believe, around £45, including shipping. So nice, <clears throat> possibly antique component parts, but a late 20th century model train, um, possibly an American type steam train. All right. Okay. We now have. Last three items, quite quick, working stock, uh, two of them, and I'll finish on, on the unknown. Uh, nice little brass planter. I believe it's possibly that kind of early 20th century pre-war, probably just towards the end of the arts and crafts period because the, you've got the floral embossing around it. Um, it's, uh, it's hand hammered as well. So there's a lot of arts and craft style work gone into this, um, but I wouldn't put it at necessarily as um, Victorian or even very early 20th century. I'd put this towards the end of the arts and crafts period, just pre-war really, pre-Second World War that is. But a nice little piece of working stock. I don't go for much because 
there are a lot of them around. In fact, I've got two pretty well identical items listed on the Antique Central website. Uh, this one's slightly bigger, I think, than the other one. Uh, and they probably go for around the 25 to, well, around the £30 mark, including shipping. But nice, useful, functional, decorative. That's what we're all about at Antique Central. Okay, so this is the last but one item. And it is an Indian box with an inlaid oxbone floral decoration on the lid. Hinge lid. Possibly would have had some velvet lining it at some point, but that's gone. Uh, I think this is a slightly older one. They still make them now. They knock them out probably quite a few uh, every day in uh, India, wherever, wherever they make it. But uh, I think this is quite an old one, looking at the wood. And the actual wood itself, it's called shisham. <laughs> shisham, easy for me to say. Shisham wood. And uh, it's uh, a common sort of tree that grows in the, uh, in the Indian continent. Uh, it's a hard wood. Uh, it's, they use it because it's easy to carve. It's resistant to... Um, insects like uh, termites and things like that. So it's good for that part of the world. And also when you polish it up, you can get quite a shine on it, which is uh, you know handy as well for decorative boxes like this. And it, I don't know what it was originally used for. Could have been a jewelry box, could have been for keeping, well, if it had velvet in, it wouldn't be keeping spices in it. But uh, I don't know, maybe it didn't have velvet in, who knows? It's got a bit of age to it. And again, they're not, not expensive at all. And I think with shipping, I've got this up for thirty pound. What I do like about it is the inlaid oxbone motif on the lid. A lot of work gone into that. And when you think what you're getting for your money, sometimes you know, surprising, isn't it? And it's kind of an Art Nouveau. It's not chip carved as such, but a uh, nice little floral, hand carved decoration around the central motif on the lid, and all around the edges as well. A lot of work gone into that for thirty pounds. Um, anyway. That's, on, that's uh, listed on the website. Now, finally, a ceramic. We'll finish on a ceramic. And this is it. I'll pick this up for next to nothing at a, a car boot or flea market, I suppose, if uh, our American subscribers. And it's hand-painted ceramic on a hardwood base, and the hardwood base is carved as well. I mean, it stands perfectly uh, level, absolutely no problem. But it's actually really decoratively carved now there's a name on the bottom as well and it's you can read that it's kathleen fisher now the only kathleen fisher ceramicist or potter that i can find is an american lady and She's been, if this is the right one, she's been operating for a while. There are examples of her work from the 70s. So I don't know what period this from. This is from. I've tried to contact her only today. So hopefully I might get a reply and I'll let you know if it is the lady that I think it might be, you know, that, that actually made this. So I have listed it and I put £45 on it. It's studio pottery. As I say, it's signed on the base. Adds value. No chips or cracks, undamaged, and I think it's a lovely item. L little bud vase. Uh, it's kind of almost um, earthenware in a way. It's got that feel, glazed inside, so I don't know if it's waterproof. Might, might be, because it's glazed. But uh, I'd probably uh, just put some uh, buds in there, you know, uh, flowers, dried flowers or, or something like that. I don't know. I don't, as you can tell, I'm not really uh, probably... Not really one for displaying flowers in my house. Um, but I know they do look really nice for the people that do. And uh, right, I'll stop waffling. Um, digging myself in a bigger hole there, I think. But there you go. Um, that's a lovely little ceramic vase, bud vase by Kathleen Fisher. And I'm trying to find out who Kathleen Fisher is. So I took a bit of a risk list in it at £45 on the website without knowing the proper value of it. Right, there you go. That's it. That's the haul. So hopefully that's kept to the 20 minutes. Uh, mixture of ceramics, uh, 
metal and wooden wear. So something for everyone. As ever, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Really helps the website. No, it doesn't help the website. Well, it probably does, but it does help the YouTube channel. And uh, we're building numbers, subscribers now. Quite encouraging. But it's always great to hear from you in the comments as well. And if you're a new subscriber, please let me know where in the world you're from. And add, I'll add you to our digital subscriber list, which you should see scrolling across the bottom of the screen as I speak. I don't give away where you live, just the general area. And, um, you know, people quite like to see um, where the community is from. And that's what this channel is all about. It's all about the community. And I wish I could get some more comments actually on the videos and people talking to each other. That's what my intention is for the channel. So if you feel the urge, please leave a comment, int introduce yourself. And um, you never know, you might even um, make some friends and acquaintances on, uh, on through, through the channel. Right, that's it. As ever, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.